Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Hey guys, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Awesome chat. Still here in Hermitage, PA at the E Center at Linden Point. Don't forget the E on that. Uh, and uh, we're talking with another entrepreneur here, or recovering entrepreneur, as yep. we've discovered here. <laughs> we'll have a good conversation about that. Uh, Andrew Pavlik, and we'll talk about his business in a moment. But please check out Awesome Chat. I'm sorry, AwesomeCast.net, uh, where you can find the Awesome Chat, and all the interviews, and of course the main Awesome Cast, and uh, plenty of interviews we've done over the last, I don't know, year and a half at this point uh, with. Uh, tech companies, video games, all podcasters, all kind of fun stuff in and outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for joining us. So tell us no a little problem. bit about your company. Sure. So right now I do a lot of freelance work. It just operates under my name. Uh, sometimes I use a uh, create at Andrew Pavlik. So if you go to andrewpavlik.com, that's my website where I just operate from. Uh, it's work that I normally cover is bounces around from everything from character creation for training and medical simulation all the way up to architectural visualization. Um, I'm even talking with uh, an organization that owns uh, Winter. The, they're trying to fire that back up and do uh, something similar to the e center down using that industrial space. And I may be doing, um, I'm trying to think the best way. So photography for but panoramic uh, like, tours three, are, like 360 and, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah so we've, it, we've been having some fun playing yeah, with those. So I too. bounce around quite a bit when it comes to basically uh, digital content creation. Mm -hmm. So heavy focus in 3D, but still in the end, it doesn't really limit to where uh, I, I end up being sometimes. That's awesome. And say, so, like I talked about in, my, in our other conversations here, like, you know, I am from the area. Mm -hmm. So, and when I heard that there's this East Center up here and there's this, you know, this kind of stuff going on. I was just like, oh, wait, wait, in Hermitage? Like, yeah. I, I, I don't remember this kind of stuff yep. here. Like, have you always been in the area? Is this, uh, you know, something that, that you've been trying to do this kind of work here for a while? Mm -hmm. So I went to Bowling Green State University. It's on the opposite side of Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, after I wrapped up school, you know, moved down to Pittsburgh with my sister. I was looking to try and stay in the region. Uh, but much like probably most people who follow, you know, focus in the technology field, you don't look at Sharon Farrell Hermitage and go, I have a, a you know, a tech job and I expect to stay in the area. You're, oh, yeah. you're either going to land in, you know, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, or you're leaving the area to head towards one of the larger cities. Uh, so after the company, I, I worked at a company called Logic Junction in Cleveland for about four and a half years, give or take a little bit. And when the company shifted direction, I came home and I was looking for uh, co-working opportunities. So I was doing some freelance work on the side, but you know, going to Starbucks or Panaria, that, that, that only works so well, right? It, it, it wears on you after a while, too. Exactly. Yeah. So I was looking for opportunities in that area. I saw a bunch in Cleveland and Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. and I managed to come across the E-Center through just you know, a random Google search. And that set me down the path of entrepreneurship and coming out here and starting a, a game company and then eventually partnering up and all this stuff that eventually leads to either a successful company or a recovering entrepreneur. Well, I mean, and that's that's something we talked about. The Kentucky is this, the, this idea of like kind of failing, you know, to to move forward mm -hmm. kind of idea. You know, like you, you learn a lot from that. You do learn quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. There's a, a lot of stuff that comes out of it from, you know, trying to gauge how quickly you need to move when when you should take a risk and when you shouldn't. Playing it maybe sometimes a little too safe, and then also trying to explore the avenues when it comes to you know, finding partners or finding uh, funding instead of, you know, trying to you know do it out of the pocket, you know, with bootstrapping or, you know, there's just a million different routes you can go. But in the end, it's easy to overlook a lot of those until you come into a place like the E-Center or someplace else and start moving through that process. Mm -hmm. And then starting to, you don't really appreciate the process or what's behind it until you start doing that type of stuff and taking Absolutely. those risks. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm used to talking with companies and talking about the startup scene in Pittsburgh and everything. And and this seems to be the, the kind of the core of that kind of community here in this region. Like how, how you know, how do you see that kind of happening? Are, 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 you know, are there a lot of opportunities here that like definitely more than you expected, of course, mm -hmm. but like how is that kind of community up here? Uh, 
small but growing. I think one of the things when it comes to that is it's the same when I first did my search and, and found this place out here. Uh, you know, a few years ago, this didn't exist at all. And I don't mean simply the e-center, but the idea of doing anything along these lines. If you were looking to do a startup, you were going to be going to, you know, PNC Bank or maybe one of the credit unions and try and uh, figure out how to get a little bit of money from them. And then it was, you know, go buy Startup for Dummies book or something along those lines, or you were going to go do <laughs> I mean, a It's out there, online. isn't it? There's, it? there's definitely one of those, it right? It most likely is, but you were on your own. Yeah. And whereas within the cities, you had some sort of support structure. And with the center out here and what they might be doing down at, uh, you know, other locations in the area that are just starting to fire up, uh, that changes the game quite a bit. But the trick is, is it's still pretty early mm -hmm. and the community is still adjusting to what this is. Uh, so, I mean, it's kind of things where with my generation, we're just kind of starting to get the idea of coming to a business incubator and, and firing away with this one. But it seems like the high school students are the ones that you really need to be having this discussion with because they're the mm -hmm. ones who are going to be right from the get-go, you know, you get them into this system and it's a seed that's planted and grows. Whereas in our case, you know, we've done the nine to five, we've gone to the local companies and the idea of, you know, taking on all that debt from going to school and then taking on the risk of doing your own business at the same time mm -hmm. is a little bit hard to get past. Whereas if you are given the entrepreneur spirit right from the beginning, uh, that seems to be something that, it, it, you give it a, a valid path forward instead of, well, this didn't work out. How about you go try your own oh, business? Oh, yeah, because I know when I went through, it was pretty much um, you're either going to trade school or you're going to college, right? Yeah. There, there's not a lot in between. There's not a lot of self-startedness. There's really kind of preparing you to be a, a, a cog in the wheel, right? Yes. So, certainly. So, um, you know, uh, you've been here for, how long have you been here with, with, with the center? About three years. About so three I, years. Yeah, so, so I, I started my own thing, then I eventually partnered up. Bills mm -hmm. came off, and I've been doing freelance for about... Uh, doesn't feel like you're probably gonna maybe give it or take that little bit. I've been searching for that one, so it's it's each year's been pivot something else, pivot something else. Oh, absolutely! Else. And <laughs> that, that, that time seems to stretch or not stretch yeah. when when you get in that exactly. space too. And then so. you don't realize how much it has stretched until somebody asks you to look back and you go, oh. hmm. <laughs> "Yeah, we're like, wait, did I do that this year? Was that was that this year we it, did yeah, that thing? Exactly. Yeah, oh, so. absolutely. I just had that issue putting together a demo reel. It was like, did we? Was this 2016 really? Um, but, um, absolutely. Uh, so, so tell me about like kind of, um, you know, how's, you know, how does the e-center kind of helped you kind of directly? Uh, it's hard to quantify it or put a list to it. Right. I mean, it's one of those things where you can basically every, you know, Google search that you find a little bit of information to, and you have nobody to ask that actual question to you. So you have to search more. You can go to one of the other businesses here. You can come to Kataki or to any of the staff here and you have somebody that you can have that discussion with face to face. You're not, you know, lost and wandering through the woods and reading this bit of information and missing 10 different pieces that, you know, are on from, you know, click this link, follow this one. It's one of the things when you go to the, you know, SBA website where you click one link and you follow that chain link down through all these different pages and you missed a ton of different information mm -hmm. digging down into that. And when it comes to the East Center, uh, yes, you have to go down a specific path, but they're going to help you along with all the inform other information and you know, kind of consolidate it and give you that direction you need to go to address, you know, these are your priorities, these are secondary, mm -hmm. and these are things that you need to keep be mindful of and they're going to be on the horizon. And it's that guidance that, you know, anybody going through the startup process that really needs because in the end, or at the beginning, I guess, technically, since you're a startup, it is, you have a huge learning curve that you got to move through. And it's not just the learning curve of whatever particular uh, business that you want to do. You know, I want to do 3D content creation. So you need to work through the learning curve of creating 3D content. There's that whole business side, the tax side, advertising, the list goes on, to, on and on of things that you don't think about until, you know, at some point during the day, you take a step back from the work that you're working on. And then the person next to you goes, Hey, so how are you advertising your stuff? And you go, I haven't even thought of that yet. Mm -hmm. And then you strike up a conversation with somebody here and that gives you that direction that you need. So a nice kind of holistic approach. Yes. It sounds like. <laughs> That's great. 
So Startup Weekend was here, and it was a pretty great showing. Uh, the the you know for a first one in a region like yes. this outside of Pittsburgh yes. and a theme to it. Um, what what did you have any expectations going into that, and how did it kind of pan out for you? Yeah, uh, it's the first one I've ever gone through. So as far as expectations went, uh, I try to not give myself many. I was just mm-hmm. going to kind of go in and and see what it happens as far as how. The event would be ran and how the teams would flush out. Because one of the things, like you said, it was a really high showing with a large volume of people. I wasn't sure how many people, like, you can have a ton of people sign up for stuff, right? It's like yeah. on a meetup kind of website. It happens you, to me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you have, you know, 30 people sign up and three show up. Yep. So I, w- I was really kind of worried about what that number would be, especially, once again, given the area, there's interest, but it's taking some time to build that up. So that was really impressive to see that number showing. Um, how did it pan out for me? Uh, I wish I would have pushed myself more out of the comfort zone, to be honest. Uh, the team that I worked with, uh, we focused on, uh, doing an energy game. Mm -hmm. Uh, my background is in creating 3d content for training, medical sim, video games, animation, take your pick, but it was very similar to what I do day to day. And so for as much fun as it was, it was, a week and working on stuff that I do during the week. And it was, it, you, you just applied the familiar and just kind of try to wrap it around the concept for the weekend. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And part of the thing was, is I, I wanted to make sure that I was useful for the team that I was going into. Yeah. But the reality is when you're doing a startup weekend and you only have, you know, a very short period of time to really do a rough flush out of the idea. Um, everybody's reaching for any and everything there. You don't have to have this massive engineering background to pretend that, Oh, here's the diagram for what we want to build. It's just, you, you throw the eye out the idea out there, you start stitching stuff together and you see how well it works. And you out. throw it out there for people to, to support or shoot down mm-hmm. because that's, that's part of the, you know, uh, figure out if it's a good idea or not. Exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, next time around, uh, going to, make sure that I don't make that mistake a second time. That's good. Uh, for as much fun as I had, I think that uh, the better approach is to kind of go uh, completely, you know, different direction than what you normally do day in and day. It, it really is. It's not about being like in the top three or anything no. like that and whatever prizes they have for it. No. But it is about, you know, which is nice if you have a good idea to move forward. But it's, it's, it's again, kind of, another, you could call it another opportunity to fail. You know? Exactly. It's <laughs> and learn from it. Fa- exactly. It's an opportunity to fail with, it, it gives you all the learning experiences as if you were taking the actual risk mm-hmm. uh, but without actually taking the actual risk and all the pain that comes with uh, said risk. So. Absolutely. All right. Well, it, where can people check out what you're doing online or anything coming up or anything? Yeah. So if you want to check out what I'm doing online, you can go to andrewpavlik.com. Mm-hmm. I'm also uh, on Twitter. So it's at Andrew underscore Pavlik. So I'm pretty easy to find both ways. And all that information is on my website too. So awesome. There you thank go. You. Thank you so much for joining thank us. You. And thank you again, the, uh, the E center here at Linden point in the hermitage PA for hosting us here. Uh, please check out everything at awesomecast.net. Subscribe to the show, support us on patreoncom slash awesome cast. If you would like to do that. Thank you so much to my awesome guest. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.